internet. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you another edition of Game Night in Review. And last night there was just the one game played, and that was Guards Guards by Backspindle Games. Now, before I talk about that game, let me just do our usual caveats. So, as always, Game Night in Review is just my thoughts on the games played at Game Night. A lot of the time that will be a single play, so it's not a bully fetid review where I've done lots of different playthroughs with different numbers to get a full feel of the game. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Guards Guards. Guards Guards is a game set in the Discworld universe that's based on the books by Terry Pratchett. Now, if you've not read those, it is not an issue, you can still play the game. However, a lot of the enjoyment from the flavour text in both the cards and the book and just who the characters are and the way they work will go over your head if you're not a fan. I'm not a huge fan, I knew a few of them enough to kind of go, oh, oh yeah, um, but not a huge amount. And it was still definitely a game I could play. So what is Guards Guards? Well, in Guards Guards, you have been enlisted by the Watchmen, like the police of Ankh-Morpork, which is kind of the capital of the world, and you are going in search of spells, because for some reason some spells have escaped the like magical place, which is called the Unseen University, and you've been enlisted to help retrieve those spells and bring them back. What you are allowed to do is deputise other people you meet along your journeys and in order for them to work with you to achieve bringing those spells back. Whoever brings the spells back first is the winner of the game. So how does that actually work in gameplay? Well, you have this board, and my favourite thing about the board, and my, probably my favourite thing about the game as a whole, is that you have the uh, treasure chest or money chest, I'm not sure what it's called. Oh, I, I remember now, it's the luggage. And it's basically this chest with a load of legs that runs people over. Um, in the books it has a habit of eating people, but it doesn't do that in the game. And it was probably my favourite thing from the books, which is probably why I like it in the game. But it has a track that it follows, and whenever you recruit people on their cards, it says how many spaces along that track you move this luggage. So you've got to be careful about being on that track as you're moving around, but a lot of things you're going to want to go and visit and do are on that track. So you, you, you are forced to be on it at times, and it, has, it just kind of is a delay action when you hit it. You get put back to a location called a hospital, and you have to kind of pay your way out or just lose a turn. So that works fine, and it is interesting. So you, when you move, it isn't a roll and move game, that's one good thing. You have a fixed movement each turn, and that's six spaces. So you'll just move six spaces to whatever position you want to go to. And then you do the thing there. Now, the majority of places you go, what you will do is try and recruit a person. And there's like three different groups of people. And you'll look at the card, and it'll say, you need this result to recruit them. You roll the dice, if you get that result, you get that person. And this is where it starts to go, not to my liking, but not that it's a bad game, and I think a lot of people will really, really enjoy this game, because it, it is a fun game, but it was very random, especially it felt that way for me, I think, more than the other players. Because as I say, to recruit people, you roll a dice, and okay, you have a value you can add to that. For me, at the start of the game, I got a person, and that meant that that value that you use to recruit people went down for me, whereas other people, it went up. So they were there going, aha, I roll a dice, I can recruit, I roll a dice, I can recruit. And I was there going, I roll a dice, right, I have to subtract number, oh, I failed. I roll a dice, oh, I failed. I roll a dice, oh, I failed. And that's kind of how the game went for me. There was a lot of, I roll the dice, I failed. And other people, okay, they, I'm not saying other people weren't failing, it seemed much more balanced for other people. So I would say, I think my experience last night of this game 
was probably not typical of this game and that I would actually be interested in playing it again. I felt that it had a very steep learning curve and everyone at the table agreed about this and the person who was going through the rules, we were there for probably more than half an hour as these rules were explained and it was all very, what? What does that actually mean? I don't understand. It's not going in. And everyone had that. But actually the game is quite simple to play. It is literally just move, roll dice pretty much. And that is how simple the gameplay actually is. But the rules didn't get that across. So everyone was there kind of going, and then I what? And then huh, what? So I feel that's something that definitely could be improved on. I'm not going to say I would know how to improve on it. Potentially the best way to do it would be to have a video playthrough or a video rules explanation that you could refer to that makes it much clearer in the way that you're actually playing the game. But with that said, as I say, my experience was not the norm. Everyone else at the table had a fantastic time. There was great aspects of, ah, I stab you and I steal this person, I do this and I do that. There was a bit of take that, but not in a... Some kind of take that elements of games can feel very nasty. With this, it didn't feel that nasty. For starters, the majority of the I do this to you stuff, you have to get near the person. And it's not they move near you, it's you move near them. So you kind of brought it on yourself. You knew if you didn't go there, you wouldn't have got attacked. And that really mitigates the take that aspect, the nastiness of it. But there was a definite, and then I try and do this, and then I try and do that. As I say, for me, it was, I try and do this, oh, I fail. I try and do this, oh, I fail. <laughs> I really, I was just very unlucky, I think. And unfortunately, that did detract from my enjoyment of the game. As I say, other people were not having that. They were managing to play saboteurs around the board to interfere with what other people were doing, trying to return these spells. Mechanically, it was a very interesting, a very unique game. Artistically, it was very stylized in the way of Discworld. If you've seen like the covers of the Discworld artwork covers for the books, etc., it had that feel. It felt like Discworld. Of all the Discworld games I've played, I would probably say this one is the most Discworld of them for me. Would I say it's the best of the Discworld games? Mechanically, no. Ankh-Morpork, if you play that, is probably mechanically a better game. Um, a s I mean, it all does depend on what kind of game you like, though. Uh, Clax is a very interesting me game mechanically, but does no, in no way feel like a Discworld game. It feels like an abstract game, but as an abstract game it is a very good game. Which is, is a very fun family game. And of course I would say Guards Guards had that feel of falling into feeling like a family game. But you had that learning curve that kind of reduced that. And then one final issue was the playtime. Now we ended up playing this all night, so I think that was, what was that, that was three and a half hours we were playing, something like that, and we weren't even halfway through a game. Now, there were six of us, so one thing I would say, don't play with six people, it's a large number of people, and it makes it a very long game. Do I know whether or not it would play better with fewer people? Well, no, I've not tried it. Um, there wasn't really that much of an issue with downtime. People's turns were very quick. It was very much boom, 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 back to me, boom, 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 back to me. I found it to be too long for the game that it was. So then one final thing I want to say on this is with regards to the component quality. Now component quality is really good on this. The board, the cards, they're all really nice quality, they're vivid, it all work, looks good, it all works well together. 
the cardboard tokens are really thick cardboard and they feel really nice. So component wise they have done a stellar job with this. In summary, I think that you should try Guards Guards. I think that you will probably enjoy Guards Guards, but you definitely can't treat it as a serious strategy game. There is far too much luck involved with that than that. However, if you do like luck heavy games, you will probably really enjoy this. And if you like Discworld, you will especially enjoy this. So for those fans of the Discworld, this is a definite try and probably a buy. For other people, for people looking for a more serious, more in-depth, more thoughtful game, this will not be the game for them. And I think I probably fall towards that side in this case. I like games that have a mixture of strategy and luck, and this game just felt too heavy on the luck for me. But, as they say, try before you buy. And I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Game Night in Review. If you have, please do check out the other episodes as well as the rest of the videos on the channel. And of course, please subscribe to the channel and share the channel across the internet with your friends and families and random strangers who you think might enjoy it. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.